So I got hold of some of these watercolour sticks, professional watercolour sticks by Winsor & Newton, and I thought that I would uh, just record my first go using them. So straight out of the box, the first thing that I noticed was how small they were. They're really ditty. Uh, you know, when I hold it there, it's quite thin, and it's also about the size of my thumb uh, in a sort of like uh, rectangular kind of package. And for those metric fans out there, that's about just shy of six centimeters uh, in length. And I thought I'd begin using them on a kind of standard watercolor, uh, Cotman watercolor paper, and it's 190 GSM. And I decided I'd just do a quick kind of still life sketch of some uh, conkers, some horse chestnuts that I've had lying around since last autumn. So for my first go, I thought I'd keep it simple, and I thought I'd just use one particular colour using burnt umber here to draw the horse chestnut, the conker with, and to try and get all my shadows, all my light areas, everything, off of just this one watercolour stick. So as I'm sketching this out, uh, just getting the shape drawn out with the watercolour stick, first thing I notice is it's got a sort of uh, slightly waxy quality to it, which you kind of expect, because obviously it's supposed to, you know, uh, be watercolour, after you add water to it and it's not going to be like a chalky pastel at all but that's how it feels it does feel like a pastel in your hands and when you're drawing with it it feels like you're drawing in the same way that you would with a chalk pastel but it had this slightly more greasy kind of slippy kind of quality to it as I was drawing on the paper with it so as I'm sketching it out and putting in the uh, the dark areas, the shading, the tonal areas right now, uh, I'm also thinking sort of with my watercolour brain. So I'm leaving areas white because I'm thinking, well, some of these will be where light is shining on the conker and I have to leave it as a highlight. You know, And if I was painting in watercolour, I would leave bright white, paper white highlights to be the very brightest area. So I'm trying to be careful about where I put the... Um, the, the watercolour stick on here and how much tone I'm adding because I want to make sure that I can get some nice bright highlights hopefully. And just like any kind of tool that is like a pastel, when you get it new and it's kind of this kind of rectangular shape and you've got um, four kind of square straight edges, it's really cool because you can use one of those kind of angled edges to get some really, really fine lines or you can sort of hold it on its side and again do a fine line and that's all brilliant when it's new but of course as you use it and it gets worn down a little bit, a bit, a bit stubby, it's much more difficult to get any kind of a, a distinct fine line unless you take a craft knife to it and you start, you know, um, shaving away bits, cutting bits off to get back to those really nice crisp straight edges that you start with. But at this point I'd almost finished the picture, the little sketch. I felt I had enough colour and enough tone on there to work with so I decided to add water and I decided I'd use a, uh, a synthetic brush first of all. So I'm using a size 8 Galleria so it's quite a big fat brush but I load it up with water and I get in there and you're probably thinking why is he using a synthetic brush? Why not use a watercolour brush like a, a squirrel hair or a, a sable or something nice like that? Well, I was kind of thinking, I didn't know how well it would pick up off the paper. I just didn't know. And, you know, used to using things like watercolour markers where I use a synthetic brush then because it's much easier to mix water and colour on the paper when you've got a, a, a brush that's a bit stiffer and got a bit more spring to it. I figured the same might apply here, so that's why I was kind of cautious and started with a synthetic brush to try and mix the water and the, and the colour on the paper because I just didn't know um, how easily the colour would come off uh, the surface of the paper and kind of mix with the water. In the actual fact, it comes off really easily. It's just like saying using a watercolour pencil in that respect. You know, once you added the water and worked it a little bit with the brush, the two mixed together fine straight away. So it's already blending together and it's allowing me to get some, uh, some nice pale kind of colours mixed and blended together here. And I didn't think this highlight coming up here that I just worked on was um, light enough. So I thought I'll blot it. Uh, so I get a piece of tissue and almost before I'm able to blot it, it's already drying out. And I forgot that thing about when you're using watercolour pencils, and, and these are very similar in that regard, you actually seem to use a lot less water, or at least I was than when you're using real watercolour. When you're using classic watercolour from pans and tubes, you tend to you know, use so much more water and let those colours flood around the paper and move them around with the brush. And I kind of forgot that when I use um, watercolour pencils before at least, I tended to find that I didn't actually add a lot of water, even though this is on 190 GSM paper, so it could probably take it. Uh, I tend to use a little bit less water and I'm trying to blend the colours together and get rid of any kind of... Um, pencil strokes it was when I was using watercolour pencils or any kind of like stroke marks here I want it to look as though it's almost been painted with real watercolours so I want it to look uh, kind of seamless and have no streaks and no lines. Um, it's interesting to note here the bottom part of the conker where I have 
put um, watercolor stick and I haven't added water to it yet is quite dark. It's still quite a dark brown, uh, more like the burnt umber that I associate with that kind of color. Whereas the rest of the conquer, I've added water and I blended the water and the color together on top of the paper. It's very, very pale uh, in almost a kind of like a tea stain kind of way. Uh, and that's quite important because that informs uh, a couple of my other experiments that I try later on in this video based on the fact that at this point I was looking at it thinking that looks a little bit too pale. But at this point I was just experimenting these, uh, you know, my first go with these watercolor sticks. So I was just quite content to just pop the color onto the paper, work it around and see how it was going to work and see what adjustments I'd have to make. So at this point I'm thinking burnt umber. So I decided I'd get a little bit of burnt umber on my brush from my actual burnt umber half pan. And as you can see, even with adding water to the edge of it there, it is radically different in terms of brightness and also depth of color. So I was a little bit at this stage, um, can the real burnt umber please stand up? You know, which one is it? Is it this stick or is it the half pan? So that made me think, right, I'm gonna draw it again. And um, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna press down a lot harder and get a lot more of the watercolor stick color on the surface of the paper and then see if I can get a much darker effect. So this time I'm using uh, exactly the same paper and exactly the same brush and pretty much similar amounts of water but I've got more color on there and in the bottom corner here where I'd really laid it on thick I came across one of those problems that I used to have using watercolor pencils and that's if you put a lot of color on when you started to work at it with the water it kind of had this almost streaky greasy effect when you blended the two together and I found that was happening exactly the same with these watercolor sticks and that's why uh, I sort of get the brush and I clean it up a little bit and I try and go over the paint a little bit more to try and blend it in but I wasn't really happy about that aspect. But the one positive was that I was able to get much much stronger darker colors this time around uh, having put more of it actually on the paper than m at my first attempt. And here you can see the two of them next to each other for comparison, how pale that first one is, and then how much darker I managed to get that second one, but obviously with the slightly greasy quality. So then I thought what I'd do is I'd try using 300 GSM paper this time for a third and final go um, using the watercolor stick. So I use exactly the same approach. I try and sketch out the shape of the uh, conquer first of all, and then start to uh, locate kind of the middle of it and start to put in the tonal areas and, and sketch out some of those tone. And again, I was pressing down a little bit harder this time because I wanted to have that sort of depth of color yet again. And this time I decided, okay, I'll experiment. I'll use a sable brush this time. So I'm using a size five rowney sable brush. And I thought it was gonna be difficult because obviously sable brush is a lot softer, carries a lot more water, but it actually blended really, really well. It blended really well with the color that was on the surface of the paper. And I wasn't sure whether it was because it was a sable brush or because it was slightly nicer paper that I was using. Maybe it's a combo of the two, but it certainly didn't have any problem picking up the color, mixing it with the water, as you can see. The depth of color came out really nicely, but I was a bit annoyed that some of the watercolor stick that I put on, you can see it just in the shadow areas. It hadn't quite managed to get that to blend completely with the water that I had put on and added together. So, you know, that was a bit of a drawback for me. So as I finish up drawing this one with the sable brush, I'd have to say after my first go with these, I'll probably stick to my small portable watercolor set if I'm going out in the kind of uh, the wilds, the open air and doing sketching because it's just got a brightness and a depth of color and more versatility you can do with the water and the brushwork than the watercolor stick could provide. I think I'd only use this if I had nothing else and I was out and I needed to do a, just a quick sketch. But tell me your thoughts if you've used them. Please leave a comment below and don't forget to like or subscribe.